I uh, saw that Chandler Crump apparently was uh, interviewed, quote unquote, by Destiny, or there, there's that. I think it's that. Uh, it's it's the Gen Z, jeez, ah, kids, uh, Gen Z shit lib um, thing Jubilee, where it's it's you know so they they're constantly trying to present like you know, a situation of, oh, look, these young people, the young minds of today debating an idea, you know, as if we're talking about Donahue or something back in the day. Well, the interesting part about it was, and this has come up enough times that uh, it, I, I just thought I would address it, is how disingenuous white liberals are when it comes to uh, because they obviously know very little about black America in a way that it, you could simply observe black America uh, from historical imagery, uh, especially stuff from like entertainment, things like that, and, and figure out like, no, no, the discussion about the, how bad the welfare state was for that community is completely valid. All you've got to do is observe that community. That's it. All you that you just have to have an honest observation of the community. The the shit libs don't do that at all, and and it really shines through in in interviews like that. That they want to act like, well, what do you mean, the welfare state? I mean, you know, what is your, you know, oh, would you rather? poor black women starve or blah 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 or force them to into abusive relationships that's then the next thing they always that always has to come up that they'd be forced into dysfunctional or abusive relationships when any study over the like the last 10 20 years on if you are in a marriage and the marriage starts getting tough if you tough it out and you stay together, you both actually end up being a, a lot closer in the long run. Like it's good for you to get over your your differences. Um, that that's you know it, it that's just it. And and what, but there's one of the things is is that you see destiny is a part of this school of thought of women are not widely dysfunctional or or have or. or don't have a problem being mentally ill. You know, that, that being the mental case is okay. And our society shines that on for both shit-lib men who are female-adjacent brains, like Destiny. A guy who, I mean, like, imagine if Destiny were to, to try to convince Africans that they should be more liberal. And one of his uh, convincing points is one day he just thought, I should suck cock. And he did. And hey, nothing happened. So, you know, I didn't get struck by lightning. I didn't die. So it must be okay. You know, they, they would be like, oh, you're insane. Because why would you do something like that? You see, so, so it's, it's this thing of like, well, no, but you, you're obviously, something's obviously wrong with you, Destiny. Because you're a manlet. You're a tiny manlet who is, you know, a cuckold swinger and you suck cock, you know, <laughs> like on a whimsy because you just got curious about it. And that's not normal. Um, and so when you should take it as is, so you're this extremely abnormal person, you know, in, in saying to this, the, this person who does know something about their own history, well, well, you say welfare is bad because of, of your knowledge of the history of your own people. I don't know anything about that. You need to convince me. <laughs> and so this keeps coming down to white liberals think that black people lived like in destitution. And, and, they, oh, and then they act like that's the case. They, they, it just keeps compounding. Even people that they do know enough about black American history that it's like, you're from Detroit. You remember when it wasn't, you have video footage of when it wasn't like this. 
And you, you have historical documentation of the soul period of time where black Americans were doing exceedingly well. That's why soul music could exist is that it was the new young sound. It required tremendous amounts of investments in sound equipment, in, in people's time, in instruments. Um, you know, it, and it, it, a lot of this was done at the local level. So that means that people were, these were local uh, recording studios. <laughs> so they're not people going to New York to do the recording. These are people recording it in Philadelphia and stuff like that. Um, at, at a neighborhood studio that and and that wasn't abnormal to have like a, a record studio in a small city in the 1970s and 1960 that wasn't odd it wasn't like common but it wasn't odd it wouldn't be like what a record a pe people who record things that's crazy so it, there's this idea that it was like oh in the 60s when people had only stones or something. I mean, the we it's really weird what young people seem to think life was like or something. <laughs> like, so black people had multiple cars in those days. Like they had, there's whole sections of cities that were owned. They were owned. People owned the homes. My grandmother died in a home she owned in the south side of Chicago. So it's it's this thing that I, I like this obviously is something that the that a lot of the liberals want to pretend they they live in a pretense about black Americans. That's really what it is is it's a pretense and that because so many women come out of that bastardy culture and out of the rebellious bad women and, and stuff like that. So they have, they perpetuate these crazy stories as well. Um, because they, they're, they're, they will, are, they are the, the, the women being rejected by the men of their, their culture um, when it comes to marriage. Because of their, their poor socialization and their, their, you know, lack of knowledge of James Brown, but plenty of knowledge of Mary J. Blige. Um... And, and, yeah, and constant complaining about how beset upon they are. So, I just thought it was just something that, that uh, I wanted to touch on. Because the, when I, cause I got so into that period of time of soul music, the early mod period, and stuff like that. <laughs> and because I've realized that there, there's... I didn't know much about it. There's lots of documentation on it now. But it's like people, did, did they have no idea about the modernist period and when that happened and how, how important that was to music and popular culture. Um, it's the, the, the uh, advent of the birth control pill. You know, very few people read, like, the skinhead books, like, the, the, like skin birds, what was it? sorts and sorts and birds or something like that like there was these old books for that, that that were the fiction the pop fiction of that time about this young this young new uh this young new style that everybody had adopted and uh and where she she's hanging out and she meets like the the hippie girl who she doesn't like um but there's just a lot of this that without knowing these this historical context it's a lot of the debates of these like young atheistic types it's like why are you even doing it when like you you seriously you don't know what you you don't know about this group of people very much and and it, thomas Sowell's the one of course who made people understand the economics and then kevin samuels where he's like most the vast majority of black americans are in the middle class I don't know where people are getting this idea that we're this destitute people that can't make it without selling contraband. And uh, that's how the liberals like it. And a big part of it is because then they, they, they get to legislate themselves jobs in the social system. And that, because that is what the liberals do. That that's their kind of their, their 
way that they come up on everything is uh, blacks on welfare while uh, white liberals are um, staffing the welfare office. There we go. Yeah, that's a way of thinking of it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what that debate was kind of uh, making me consider later.